Ay, ay, ay. Good evening. This is the uh, regular uh, meeting of the Administration and Public Works Committee. Um, we have a quorum. And uh, could we get a motion for the approval of the minutes of the May 9th meeting? Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Okay. Items for consideration. Um, <clears throat> the city of Evanston's payroll through 5811 uh, uh, $2,488,528.91. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Okay. Evanson bills for funding year 2011 through 52411, $2,979,024.98. Is there? Second. It's been, okay, it's been moved and second. Um, there are questions? Alderman Burrs? Sure. Uh, my question is about 2455.62470, Creative Souls by Pilar Jewelry Materials Workshop. Uh, I have a couple questions. The first is... The answer to the question was, what is this for? And it says, the workshop was to meet a grant-funded deliverable of building self-esteem as part of a teen parent services curriculum. So my question is, could this funding have been used for other activities first? Who decided what activity would be used? And three, who owns Creative Souls? Thank you. This is Carl Kniva with the Health Department. Um, in regards to this expenditure, uh, it was made in regards to the, the teen parent uh, with the grant. The reason for the expenditure was to address, uh, um, it, 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 they identified the jewelry store, uh, which was in Rogers Park, because it was a person who's, who's uh, been in the teen parent program before with the city of Evanston. Uh, so this was an effort to build uh, entrepreneurship knowledge uh, in the participants as well as uh, build self-esteem among the participants. And uh, the reason it was spent uh, to Creative Souls was because that was the only one that uh, met the requirements of having a, a former uh, person who was involved in the program, as well as uh, meet the requirements for esteem and uh, 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 esteem and entrepreneurship building. I just want to ask a follow-up. So as part of this, it, you would have to go to a place that is owned by somebody that was formerly in the program? I don't, I don't know that that's a requirement of the grant. I can, I can look into that and get you a better answer. Okay. I, you know, I, I, obviously we're going to prove it, but I would like to know how we're coming up with where these uh, students are going and what is the outcome, what is really the purpose? What are we trying to do to get them to this, the next level of whatever that, that is? So um, so I, I guess I'm just a little concerned. And if we're taking them outside of Evanston, but we're using Evanston dollars for our business, why wouldn't we try to find a business in Evanston that's an entrepreneur? Just a thought. Thanks. Thank you. 
Okay, are the other <clears throat> Alderman Rainey? Well, I can assure Alderman Burris that jewelry always helps one's self-esteem. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Rainey. <laughs> I don't know about this jeweler, but I can give you a list. Um, I'm very concerned about the response to the Viola transfer station mm -hmm. question that I asked. Um, I was at your meeting the other night, which was excellent, on uh, the transfer station with a very large room full of very angry people who have been um, I think very tolerant and one of the questions asked at the meeting was does any of our waste go to the Viola transfer station and we were quick to say uh, we were pretty sure it doesn't because it goes to Swank. Well if you read the answer of course that was what I was getting at in the question. All of the contractors we have, the, the people who are exempt from the franchise, a lot of that waste is going to the Veolia transfer station. And as a matter of fact, at one point in here, I, I just read it very quickly, I think it says five trucks a day go there, at least, that we know of. We, we're not, I don't, I don't think we know about all of them. Um, I think we really need to look at our franchise agreement. I, um, there's got to be a way not to be participating in the problem. If we're dumping there, we're part of the problem. Because the only way to get them out of there is if, you know, if you don't use them. Now, I'm sure we're just a drop in the bucket given I think we heard 500 tons a day is dropped at that transfer station. I'm just raising the issue, why are we letting our garbage go there? Uh, Suzette Robinson, Director of Public Works. When we, d you know, I will defer uh, to Grant and not try to answer the legal question because when we put together the specifications, um, there was um, a concern about um, limiting commerce in terms of us putting um, a requirement in our contract that says that the um, solid waste hauler could not. Um, or would not be able to take their um, waste to Veolia for us to actually exclude that. That was a discussion. Um, one of the aldermen, I believe Alderman Holmes and Alderman Jean-Baptiste, when we were putting together the um, specs in the RFP for the franchise, asked the question, and that was the response we got from legal at the time, and I'll just defer to Grant to see if that is still the case going forward, because he was not here at the time. I, but one of the other things, I want to give you a list, Grant, I'm, I'm just going to give her some, um, Suzette something. We, we pay hundreds of thousands of dollars and over the years have probably paid millions to participate in Swank. Um, you know, we've been sued, we've been everything. So we are, we are insisting that Groot take our garbage to Swank, right? I mean, the single family residential garbage. I need to know what's the difference of that requirement and our condominium garbage and our business, you know, the franchise garbage. But the condominium garbage, is that going to Veolia? Uh, yes, through, they, through, um, through Lakeshore. How can, how can we distinguish? Be, because our contract with Swank is for our residential garbage. It's there for our program. People who live in condos think they're residential, believe me, and so do I. And that is the only reason. Do you know that years ago, Suzette, we did not pick up condominium garbage? We did not. And I was part of the movement that got condominiums included in city pickups. They had to contract with their own garbage collections to get their own garbage. We did not pay for it. Okay. Right? The so. residential garbage is not the proper term. Single family home garbage, I mean that is the, 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 the distinction that is made between the contract. It's single family home versus condominiums. And the single family home program that's what our contract with Swank covers and has historically covered. But we can look at um, going forward, condominiums are still in the, they were previously as a part of the multifamily um, 
climate. So, I mean, that's... I, I see where you're going with this, but it just... It, I think if people had known at that meeting the other night that this garbage was going there, I'm glad they didn't know. Anyway, I'm sorry, Jim. Okay, we'll look into it. Okay, um, Mr. Farrar, you want to? Well, I, I want to know what the answer to that other question is, if it's not any trouble. Alderman Rainey, the franchise dis uh, discussions did predate my uh, assumption of the Corporation Counsel's Office. I will look into that and, and uh, work with Director Robinson relative to getting responses to all your questions. All right, I get it. Thank you. That's true. That's not fair to ask you to defend that. Okay. Are there other um, are there other questions? I think I just one comment. I think when we get really into the the budget. We had to pull out all these bills, lists, questions, and answers and use it as a guide for uh, things to look at more carefully. Good, okay. All right, it's been moved and second. All in favor of the uh, bills uh, through 524? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, moving ahead. A31, approval of contract award for the management and operation of three downtown parking facilities to Central Park um, Parking System. Um, RFP 11-66, staff recommends um, contract awards to Central Parking Systems uh, to manage and operate the Sherman Plaza, Maple Avenue, and Church Street parking facilities. The contract term is for an initial two years and eight months, period through May 1, 2011, and terminating in December 31, 2013, with two optional one-year renewals for a not-to-exceed cost of $1,007,000, and I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> $1,007,099 for the first eight months of the contract, $1,511,299 for the year two, and $1,545,977 for the third year. Funding is provided by the parking fund. Is there a motion? Move approval. Second. Okay, um, it's been moved and second. Are there questions or comments? Alderman Grover. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, looks as if we're looking to award the contract to CPS Parking, which has had the contract already for some time, and there were some, uh, with that information, though, CPS Parking did not score the highest in two categories. One was the operating plan. The other was the proposal itself, and I'm just wondering if, you had more information you could share with us about um, whether CPS parking has worked out whatever the shortcomings were in its operating plan as proposed, or what the issues were. Good evening, Rick Voss, Par Administrative Services. Uh, the operating plan, when we scored the account, and let me refer to my memorandum. Uh, page three is the is the chart, Mr. Voss. With the yes, ma'am. It didn't count for a lot in the calculation, but I'm just wondering: are there ways in which CPS parking, which has had the contract for a long time, you saw room for improvement in their operating plan and what that might be? Basically what it was was an organization and one of, one of the things that I proposed and when I wrote the operations and procedures manual was we did note some shortcomings that they're going to work on and, the re and we agreed on the performance manual between the two to improve those operations which would include an enhancement as going on for advertisement, a more comprehensive flow so they can bring more people into the parking garage. So when we did the operation and procedures manual that one of the things that I specified by December 30th of 2011 to come up with a valid procedure and an improved operations manual to uh, to address the minor shortcomings so, and some of it was just based on some organizational shifts that we thought was necessary and, and tied into uh, how to enhance bringing people into our garages thank you Alderman Rainey um, 
Mr. Voss, on page, let's see, where is it? I thought it was on page, um, give me one second to get back to it here. Um, okay, here. On page 47, actual 47, yeah, it's page 47 also online. Um, it says, a request for proposal was prepared by staff Sherman Plaza Self Park Facilities. The RFP was advertised in the Chicago Tribune and Demand Star. Um, did we just advertise for one garage and apply it to all three? Yes, and that was probably just an error in my memorandum when I wrote it. The proposal was for all three garages. But the the request was for all three. The request, yes, ma'am, was for all three garages and, it, it and comprehensive uh, operation and uh, management plan. You see where I'm pointing to? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to know if we. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay, it's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Okay. <clears throat> that's for action tonight. Um, A3.2, approval of contract for meter transmissions uh, unit purchase to Water Resources Incorporated. Staff recommends City Council approval of a two year contract in response to bid 24 20, I'm sorry, 12 24 for meter transmission unit purchase, units purchased to Water Resources Incorporated in the amount of $58,000. Funding for the contract will be from the water fund. In uh, FY 2011, funding is in the amount of $25,100. In uh, funding year 2012, funding will be provided in the amount of $32,900. Is there a motion? I move approval. Second. It's been moved and second. Are there any questions, comments? Alderman Grover. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just one question, uh, Mr. Stoneback, that uh, we're looking at a short-term contract for the uh, for a few of these MTUs but anticipating a larger three-year contract in 2013 how do you see those contracts folding into one folding into the other will be coming back in 2013 or to consider another one uh, Dave Stomach director of utilities uh, in 2013 we anticipate <laughs> starting to have well, before we have major failure of the batteries, we plan to, we have 14,400 customers with these devices at their uh, place, at their properties, and they will all need to be replaced as the batteries die out. In 2013 is when we uh, started funding over a three-year period to replace the vast majority of them, hoping for several thousand a year. But in 2013, we will weigh our uh, options as to whether we stay with the current hexagram system or if we go to a different type of a billing system. So you can't just replace the batteries or replace the whole device? That's correct. It's a sealed device and uh, you can't get to the battery. How do you do the readings if the MTU battery has failed? The meter continues to read. It's a positive displacement meter and so it continues to register on the register head. Uh, either. If we don't make the repair in a timely fashion, we will send somebody out to read the meter. And otherwise, uh, we can estimate for several billing periods and then hook the uh, new device up to the meter and get the current read right away. Thank you. Does every account have one of these? Yes. They do. So how many accounts is that again, 14,000? Approximately 14,400. I think we're down to about 14,300 right now. but. Any other questions? Moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> A3.3, approval of a one-month month, one month extension to the city's current electrical uh, electricity supply agreement with Mid-America Energy Company and approval of an uh, electricity supply agreement for 23 city-owned facilities based on bids to be received on May 23rd, 2011. Staff recommends a one month extension to the city's current uh, electricity supply agreement with Mid-America Energy Co uh, Company 
Um, and approval of the electricity supply agreement with the low, responsive, and responsible uh, proposal to RFP 12-23 to supply electrical energy to 23 city-owned facilities beginning July 1, 2011. Um, this um, uh, responses were to be received this morning, and I think you have in front of you information. If you had a chance to look at it, or Mrs. Stonebeck, do you want to yeah, do that? Definitely. This is Good evening again. Dave Stonek, Director of Utilities. Yes, I placed two memos uh, on the diocese today, uh, this evening. I'd like to start with the first one, which uh, recommends approval of Amendment 2 to the city's current electricity supply agreement. As was in the previous memo, uh, we became aware when we went out for the proposal that ComEd had changed its regulations requiring 18 days advance notice when you go to switch suppliers rather than seven days. That meant that we could not receive bids, proposals tonight, and switch the electric supplier uh, to f the first of next month. So we were requesting a one-month extension. In regards to the one-month extension, we can go with two options. We can receive a fixed price, or we can float on the index. Uh, staff is recommending that we accept the fixed price. Uh, basically, if you look at the reason we do that is if you look at the the colorful graph on page, the last page of this memo, you'll see that uh, prices are increasing. We And to, to lock into a price is our recommendation rather than floating and potentially have the prices skyrocket on us. The fixed price that they gave us is a little bit higher than what we were currently uh, paying. It's, it's a fraction over five cents and it's a fraction higher over five cents than what we were currently paying uh, based on our average monthly usage the the estimated monthly costs will go to ninety thousand dollars up from eighty eight thousand nine hundred dollars so I we feel that this is a uh, a reasonable fixed price cost for the month and recommend that the uh, council accept the one month extension is there a motion? Uh, I move that we accept staff's recommendation and approve Amendment 2 to the city's current electri electricity supply agreement with Mid-American Energy Company to extend the term of the agreement one month or until June 30th, 2011, and establish the fixed bundled purchase price of 0 .0558 per kilowatt hour. Is there a second? Second. Um, is um, okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, the, 8, 3. Well, I, I'd like to discuss the second memo that we Please. sent oh, right. out, Sorry, yes. and that is our recommendation to uh, award a three-year contract to Exelon Corporation based on their price to include 25 percent renewable energy and for a 36-month or three-year term. And that would be at a kilowatt hour price of uh, almost five cents, under five cents, but at 0 0.04931 per kilowatt hour. And there are lots of options that the city council can weigh on this. Uh, we, when the review committee, which consisted of members of the utilities commission uh, staff, including uh, Mr. Gaynor, director of parks, recreation, and community service, and <coughs> the sustainable coordinator, we came up with reasoning behind our recommendations to award uh, the 25 percent renewable, and that was as if the total cost was less than 2 percent of the annual cost without the renewable, and we also came up with a justification for the three-year term rather than two-year term, and uh, based on the pricing we received from Exelon, both the pricing came w within the range uh, that the selection committee recommended that we take to City Council. Dave, will you give us some um, idea of what is, what can be defined as renewable energy? Uh, in, the, in this particular case, they'll be getting the energy from a, a, a dam 
so it's hydroelectric. Uh, other examples are uh, wind turbines. Is this the only? Is this the only source? The dam uh, on the Exelon yeah. bid. They're providing all 25 percent of the renewable energy from a, a dam in Maryland. What about other communities and their um, agreements? I did not Do have you the know if they're if they're um, encouraging the use of their are their contracts including renewable energy? I do not know that. Uh, for the state of Illinois, the current law would require it if you enter into a contract in this year, 2011, you would have to have six percent renewable energy. If other communities are doing more than that, I, I do not know. Uh, I know that Northwestern University is, and they're actually, Exelon has not bid, to my knowledge, on this proposal previously for the city of Evanston. And uh, in my discussions with Northwestern, uh, and we were successful in locking in the natural gas purchase with them, but there was no real advantage for locking in with them on electricity. However, Exelon was their provider, and uh, I got to know their sales rep and encouraged him to uh, participate in this proposal, and they did, and they were a successful bidder. So uh, I really don't know what the other communities are doing, though. You know what the other communities are paying based on comparable usage? It would have, it, and it's not comparable usage. It's more or less a matter of, of, of when, when you actually of lock when. in. So, again, uh, referring back to that chart that was the last page of my previous memo uh, you can see how much the prices have dropped over the two-year period and when we locked in in November 2008 we are way over here and this is not my good work it's just that electricity prices have decreased and uh, they're just a favorable price right now this is this was a nice proposal thank you Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Stomach, was there a discussion at the uh, uh, either at the Utilities Commission or at the, the committee that vetted the bids as to the policy reasons behind uh, looking for a 25 percent renewable energy built into our electricity supplier contract? Uh, well, it was obvious to us that the city is interested in, in going green, and the option to uh, go with the 25 percent, and I have to turn to my data here, but the increase cost is relatively low, and uh, it's less than 1 percent, less than 2 percent uh, overall. If we go with the three term, the 36 month term, to provide 25 percent renewable energy, we will pay nine. The city will pay nine thousand eight hundred and eighty dollars more per year uh, for getting that 25 percent renewable, which is only an increase of just slightly over one percent if you didn't go with it. So that cost difference at nine thousand nine hundred dollars per year is a relatively low cost for getting this quantity of renewable energy, uh, taking comparison to the cost of building. A wind farm or just several wind uh, turbines and getting them up and operational it is our opinion it would cost much more to do that than just to have this renewable energy supply provided to us yeah. mm -hmm. uh, I move approval of the agreement with Exelon Energy Company to provide electrical energy to 23 city-owned facilities beginning July 1st uh, based upon 25% renewable energy and a 30-month, 30 36-month term fixed price of $0.04931 per kilowatt hour. Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So we don't have to worry about that. A 3.4, approval of professional service contract to bail and bales for that Bayless and Bayless for services center for service center locker room renovation project RFP 12-14 recommend approval of design and services 
for the service center center for the service center locker room renovation project to Bailiffs and Bailiffs at um, a renovation cost of uh, $40,200. Funded is provided by funding year uh, CPI uh, account number 415227 um, with the uh, allocation of 37500 and anticipated for funding year 2012 CPI funding of $2,700. Is there a motion? A move approval. Second. Uh, are there any questions? Comments? Oh, uh, Alderman Burrs. Congratulations, Suzette. <laughs> okay. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It was nice to see um, three Evanston bids on this yep. as well. It's very good. <clears throat> okay, A3.5. Approval of a sole source purchase for the um, base upgrade project at the Evanston Service Center. Uh, staff recommends approval of a sole source purchase of an over brand building automation systems, BAS, controls from Snyder Electric for the um, upgrade of the Evanston Service Center in the amount of 97000 Dollars. Funding is provided by the CIP account 415228 with a total allocation of $100,000. Is there a motion? Move approval. Second. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? A3.6. Approval of contract award recommended to Ness Incorporated for the abatement and disposal and disposal of asbestos containing material at the Lorraine H. Morton Civic Center, bid 12-18. Staff recommends approval of the abatement and disposal of asbestos containing materials at the Lorraine H. Morton Service Center. I mean Civic Center to Nest Incorporated in the amount of forty-four thousand dollars. Funding is provided by C a CIP account number four one five one seven five point six five five one zero with a total allocation of four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Is there a motion? Move approval. Second. It's been moved and second. Are there questions? Uh, Alderman um, Burrs. Uh, it's actually not about this uh, one specifically, but it seems that we've over the last at least two years, we have these come before us often about the um, asbestos abatement. Are we close to being finished? <laughs> it seems like it's, can I, can I just get a, your read on that? I mean, I know that you've been working on it and it has to be done, but it just seems like we should be done soon. Uh, Stephanie Levine, Parks, Recreation, Community Services. Yes, um, this, this will hopefully take care of us in the ground floor completely. Um, there's probably still some asbestos in pipes that are in vertical sections inside walls, but they're of no health concern to the occupants of the building. Great. Good news. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, Alderman Rainey. One question. Where is asbestos disposed of? <clears throat> I'm sorry. Where do we put asbestos? Where does the contractor put it's, it? It's sent to specific landfills. It has to be um, put in specific containers, um, shipped uh, in a specific manner, and it's sent to uh, a regulated landfill. Beer, <laughs> it's it's not going it's over not to the <laughs> transfer station. <laughs> I thought I saw some flying around over there. <laughs> you might have. <laughs> okay. It's been, um, do we get a motion? Um, I think we uh, moved and seconded. Yes, we moved and seconded. All, the, um, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, A3.7. Approval of contract with Nels Johnson's Tree Experts Incorporated uh, for the Dutch, uh, Dutch Elm Disease Control Program, bid 12-28. Staff recommends approval of a contract in the amount of 
$7,305 with Nels Johnson's Tree Experts uh, for the uh, 2011 Dutch Elm Disease Control Program. Funding for this contract will come from the general fund, 3535.62496, in the amount of $216,000, I mean, I'm sorry, $216,400, and reserve from funds from previous years, account number 100.41332, in the amount of $513,216. Is there a motion? Move approval. Is there a second? Are there questions or comments? All in verse. As usual, my comment is we're going into another budget season. We're spending nearly $700,000 on this program. Be prepared to cut a lot again this year because we're uh, spending money where we don't have it. Um, other comments? Alderman Rainey? Trees are green, Alderman Burse. <laughs> And my comment is always, it's expensive to be green. Um, Tell me about <laughs> I'm just still, I really would wonder what would happen one year if we just didn't do it. Uh, what would happen? If you look around this year, I, I don't know if it's just my untrained eye, but it looks to me that our trees have never looked better. I mean, I, I know we've had a lot of rain, and then you watch um, Joplin, Missouri, and some of these other places that just are completely devastated and no longer have trees because of what's happened. It just seems to me that ours are very precious. And if, you know, you don't know that next year some new disease is going to come along and wipe out a whole other species of trees. And so I think we know how to keep these healthy, we should continue to do it. Yeah, I, you know, I hear you, and I just keep saying that there's something called the circle of life, so I'm just all in the grower. Oh, Madam Chair, why don't you finish that sentence? <laughs> I think you got the point. I do, I do. Um, how will we communicate with the property owners who have private elms to make sure that they can enroll in the program if they so desire? <clears throat> do we have a database of... Elm owners. Good evening, Paul D'Agostino, Superintendent of Parks, Forestry, and Facilities Management. Um, we do not have a database of private elm trees, so we're going to do a, a general press release and try and just advertise the fact that, that all Evanston residents are going to be able to get this price uh, if they're interested in injecting their elms. Do we not know where every private elm is, though? D haven't we done a, didn't we do a tree census? We did not do one on private property, no. In general, we know some of our employees who scout every year know, it, you know where they are, but we don't have it written down anywhere on, in a database. Are there other questions, comments? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Nay. Make up your mind. Aye to opposing. <laughs> I got it. Okay. Uh, um, one. one minute. Make that two. No. I said two no's. Two no's. Homes and birth. Um, A 3.8 approval of contract with Morton Salt for purchase of rock salt bid 12 22. Staff recommends City Council approval of a contract with the purchase of up to 700,000 tons of rock salt to Morton Salt uh, for a winter season total of $419,490. Funding for this purchase will be from the Snow and Ice Control Fund, uh, 2680.65015. Funding is to be split between funding year 2011 
for $200,000 and funding year 2012 for $219,490. Is there a motion? I move approval of a purchase of 7,000 tons of rock salt from Morton Salt Company Second. and not a ton more. <laughs> Did I say something different than 7,000? 7, 700,000. Did I say? Oh, wow. I'm sorry. 7,000. Absolutely. Thank you, Alderman Grover, for the correction. I think we would probably be all salted if we got 700,000 tons, right? Yeah, that's a big barn. Absolutely. Had to probably use part of Northwestern to get it stored. Um, are there other comments? Second. Is there a second? Second. Are there other questions? Alderman Rainey. Um, what percentage of the salt is for District 65 Northwestern 202? Um, Suzette Robinson, Director of Public Works. Um, they, up to 1,000 tons is what their contract is for. And is this the total amount of salt will be, I mean, on an average winter, let's say, would we buy any more than this? Um, well, our new average, we've been um, ranging between actually eight and 9,000 tons. We have about 1,500 tons on hand in, uh, in the salt dome currently. Um, so we would anticipate this getting us through the entire season. Thank you. Um, any other questions? It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. A3.9, approval of annual Harley-Davidson lease agreement for the Evanston Police Department. Um, the staff of the Fleet Services Division of the Public Works Department and the Police Department recommend City Council approval for the City Manager to sign a one-year lease um, agreement with the Chicago Harley-Davidson uh, in the amount of $23,940 for the period of June 1, 2011 to June 1, 2012 for seven leased Harley-Davidson motorcycles. Funding is provided by the fleet uh, capital outlay vehicle lease charges. Um, account 7720.62402 with a budgeted <laughs> amount of $25,000 for this lease expense. Move approval. Second. Been moved and second. Are there questions, comments? It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? A3.10, approval of contract with Carl Walker Incorporated for design engineering services for emergency repair of service center parking deck. Uh, staff recommends approval of the contract for the parking deck restoration uh, design engineering services to Carl Walker Incorporated uh, to facilitate the emergency repair of the Evanston uh, uh, Municipal Service Center uh, building D parking deck. Funding for this work will come from the CIP uh, Service Center parking deck repairs. Four one. Five two two four in the amount of forty four thousand. Um, the budget amount is fifty thousand. Is Move there approval. okay? Is there a second? Second. Are there questions or comments? It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. A three point eleven. Approval of the single source purchase of library automation services from the Cooperative Computer Services. Staff recommends approval of the single source purchase of library automation services from the Cooperative Computer Services uh, in the amount of $82,613.74. This is a 1.7% decrease, uh, 1 decrease over last year. On an annualized on an annualized basis, funding in the amount of seventy-eight thousand uh, fifty-three dollars will be from the Library Technical Service Computer License and Support Account two eight three five point six two three four zero, and four thousand five hundred and sixty dollars and seventy-four cents from the Adult Services Computer License and Support Account two eight zero six two eight. 06.62340. Um, the city approved an inter uh, intergovernmental agreement with Cooperative Computer Services for the provision of library automation services in 205. Is there a motion? Move approval. Second. 
It's been moved and second. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. I need to catch up with myself. I'm missing my notes. Uh, A4, um, resolution 32-R-11, authorizing the city manager city manager to execute a five-year lease um, allowing continued use of parking lot number 38 located at 1016 Grove Street. Staff recommends city council approval of resolution 32-R-10 authorizing the city manager to enter a five-year lease allowing continued use of city parking lot 38 located at 1016 Grove Street. Lease will be with the young uh, Men's Christian Association of the YMCA, located at 1000 Grove Street here in Evanston. Uh, funding for the lease will be provided by the parking fund, account number 7015.62375. I have approval and have a question. Second. Okay, it's been moved and second. Alderman Grover. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my question is, does the city own then the metered parking behind the Y, the McGaw Y? I think they're metered. Is that our, is that the same lot or? Uh, no, it is not. That's lot 47, and we leased that from the YMCA, and they have chose not to offer a renewal on that. So they gave us a letter saying they're going to take over that lot. We will be removing the equipment from there effective June 1st. That, that sounds like bad news. For us? Uh, yes and no. The majority of the revenue generated in these particular two lots came from 38. Uh, 47 was very seldom used anymore. It, was, it had lost its effectiveness, so really it's not that big of a, a loss to us. Do you know what the Y intends to do with the lot? They're going to use it for staff parking. Thank you, Mr. Boss. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> A5, resolution 28-R-11, uh, authorizing lease of the first floor civic center office space to the League of Women Voters of Evanston. Staff recommends approval of resolution 28-R-11, which authorizes a new one-year lease for the first floor office space with the League of Women Voters of Evanston from July 1, 2011 to May 31, 2012, with a rent increase of 3% from $208 per month to $214 per month. Move approval. Uh, second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolution Resolution 33-R-11, authorizing the open space land acquisition and development uh, gr land, uh, grant application for the Centennial Park Lagoon. Staff recommends approval of Resolution 33-R-11, which authorizes the city manager to sign the resolution of authority for the open space land acquisition and development grant application through the Illinois Department of Natural Resources for the Centennial Park Lagoon Ren Renovation Project. The program operates on a reimbursement basis, providing up to 50% assistance for approved project costs. A private donor has offered a $500,000 donation in support of this project. Um, the grant application will request a um, maximum grant uh, award of 400000 a commitment of 100000 in capital improvement or CIP funds through uh, pending funding year 2012. Budget will be also required. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there questions or comments? Alderman Burris, Rainey, and Grover. Um, first of all, thank you to the private donor. We really appreciate it. And if anybody else wants to give us anything, money for any projects, please call. <laughs> Alderman Rainey? I, I only wish we could, we could thank the private donor <clears throat> because otherwise I, I don't see how this would be possible. Um, it's just the most wonderful gift anybody could ever expect. It's a half a million dollars and it allows for the project to go forward. Um, 
So um, just that we're all extremely grateful, as the entire city is, I'm sure. Uh, Director Gaynor, did you want to comment? Uh, yeah, I think this is a good time to our first opportunity to thank the donor, but I don't know if he's requiring anonymity. Or she. Doug, Doug Gaynor, Director of Parks, Recreation, and Community Services. In the next few weeks, there will be a press conference that will help be held out at the lakefront by the lagoon <coughs> where the donor will be there and recognized, and it will become public. Okay. Fantastic. Alderman Grover, um, do you want to make another comment? No. No. no? Okay. Just Thank adding. you. Fantastic. That's really great work. Uh, it's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? <clears throat> okay. That should have been our last item because that would be a good one to end on. Okay, A7. Ordinance 28-0-11, authorizing the city to borrow funds from the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency Water Pollution Control Loan Program. Staff recommends approval of Ordinance 28-0-11, authorizing the city to borrow funds from the Illinois uh, Environmental Protection Agency Water Pollution Control Loan Program. Loans will be used for the construction of the large uh, diameter sewage rehabilitation phase one project. Um, this ordinance authorizes the city to borrow up to $4 million. The debt services will be paid from the sewer fund. Staff has attached a revised long-term analysis that includes this loan and the debt services for repayment, and that's attached to the... Uh, um, is there a motion? Move approval. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Are there questions or comments? Alderman Rainey. All right. Since everybody out in television land can't see the memo, could we have some indication from staff, from Dave, how many phases is this going to be? Are we going to relive the, uh, <laughs> the previous sewer construction? How is this going to work? Uh, Dave Stonelak, Director of Utilities. Uh, the type of work that's proposed for this is the CIPP lining, the, the cured in place lining process. Uh, because it is larger in diameter, it is more disruptive than uh, the smaller diameter work that we do. The, on the larger diameters, uh, they uh, are at a site for up to a week at a time. Uh, but it is, it, it's not open-cut construction. It will be much less disruptive in that nature. But how long will it go on, and what will the total cost be? Uh, the total cost is estimated at just under $4 million. So this is, that's what I'm asking. Is this mm -hmm. it? I mean, it, this is phase one. It's, are there going to be 20 phases or phase uh, A.5? As, as we get, if we are able to obtain more loans from the IEPA, we will continue to do more work. Uh, we broke this into uh, a lot of different phases, and as you can see, this current project is for funding for two projects because we don't know how much funding the IPA will loan us. So we, we make it relatively small packages, around $2 million, so that if they have an extra $2 million or $2 million available, we can get that. If they come across with a $10 million loan and we have the projects that do it and there's uh, sufficient funding to re repaid at that service, then we would take it in one bigger swoop. The duration of this project will be about 18 months, but that's scattered all over. The, For instance, the work that's on Davis Street is, is proposed to take place uh, right after New Year's and be completed before the spring starts. Uh, the, the work on uh, Elgin isn't limited by anything except uh, potentially uh, the work, well, the cold weather and then we don't want to interfere with the uh, football traffic. Emerson Street, again, is, we have different schedules for each one. On Prairie, we're, we're trying to force them to do that during the, the two-week window when the school isn't in use uh, between the summer and, and the other. So it's all broken up, and we, we tell the contractor when they can't work within that window rather than giving them specific deadlines when they can do it. So... Given the availability of the loans, this could be a long-term project. Until if loans keep coming, it will take us quite a few projects to complete the full 7.2 miles that we're looking or hoping to do. 
Um, uh, can I ask? Uh, uh, Alderman Rainey, uh, Marty Lyons, Assistant City Manager. Um, on the memo, we do reference that the 7.2 miles would be about $14.4 million. And then I, I would compare that to the in excess closer to $200 million for our huge projects during the 90s that we did. So we're looking at uh, a much smaller scale to do this section or, or this this work, 14.4 for our total. And then when we look at our long-term debt, we would still see that 14.4. If we did that over four to five years, that we would still see a, a, a decreasing overall um, debt service load to the sewer fund, which we need to have uh, given our current usage levels. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> is there a plan uh, in terms of keeping residents informed? Because the old sewer project, you know, that went on forever, <laughs> um, you know, I, people had all kinds of, of misinformation, maybe I'll call it that, um, because first everyone thought it was going to be five years and it was 10 and then it, you know, went on and on. Um, but a way of keeping the residents informed so that um, they will know what's going on with this? Uh, that is our intent. I had initially started some conversations with Alderman. I met with Alderman Grover about the project that would be up in her ward. But then uh, working through to make sure we were able to get this ordinance passed and the, and the financing, the project kind of slowed down. We were hoping to actually start this summer uh, since we haven't even applied for the loan yet. And, passing or we applied for the loan but passing this ordinance is needed to actually get the loan uh, we won't start work now until after january 1st till the we get the award bid it and award it the work would start mm -hmm. next year so we didn't go out and start advertising it so much yet but we will definitely keep the aldermen and the residents informed of this work okay it's been moved and second no would you move? Um, could we get a motion then? I thought so too. I thought it had been moved and second. Okay. Okay, it's been moved and second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. A8. Ordinance 47 0 11. Provisionally adopting, enacting, and re enacting Title 1, 2, and 11 of the City Code. Staff submits for review and consideration adop adoption of Ordinance 47-0-11, provisionally amending the following titles to the City Code. Uh, one, Title I, General Administration. Two, Title II, Boards and Commission. And three, Title XI, Administration Adjudication. This is <laughs> Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Is that discussion? This is for introduction for tonight. Yes, I had a, I had a comment. Um, I spent uh, a couple days last week at Evanston Township High School for a two-day workshop called Beyond Diversity. <clears throat> and it got me thinking about a lot of things, still thinking about a lot of things. Uh, but I also began thinking about the battles that I fought for high school, and it wasn't because of my race, it was because of my gender. So I was pleased to see that a lot of the amendments, proposed amendments to the code are to uh, bring some gender neutrality to eliminate the exclusivity of the language as to gender in this. And, but there's, there's one word that still sticks out in my head as not being so gender neutral, and that is our title. Alderman. I get lots of questions about what do I call you, alder person, alder woman. I make jokes about why don't we change it to alder women for the next 50 years and let all the men be alder women for a while. Um, but I think one change that I'd like to propose is for the purpose of the code, not for our common usage, not for how we refer to ourselves, but I'm proposing that we change for the purpose of the code the word, word alderman to council member. Uh, the city of Champaign uses council member, and our Michigan uses council member. Springfield still uses alderman. Madison, Wisconsin still uses alderman. But I'd like us to think really hard. Now's the time to do this when we're making these kinds of wholesale changes to our city code, when we're trying to tinker with it for gender neutrality. 
and changing, really, just for the purpose of the city code, uh, the reference from alderman to council member. It's a word substitution. Okay, Alderman Rainey. Um, I would, you know, I don't support that, but to have the discussion, it needs to be at the Rules Committee. This mm -hmm. is not the appropriate location. Um, so we make a reference to the Rules Committee? Could we please? Yeah. I'd also like more information about the reference made in, um, in the state statutes, um, which mm -hmm. refers to Alderman. Okay. And, and is there any difference between uh, the definition of an alderman or a council member? Based upon my preliminary research, there isn't. And uh, because uh, city councils in Illinois have both council members and aldermen, it adds a, um, uh, just one extra, what do you call it? The, anyway. Mr. Farr? I don't see why it can't be. Uh, members of the committee, Grant for our Corporation Council, um, thank you. Um, I am uh, looking, actually, I've pulled up the municipal code, and there are uh, references to um, <clears throat> aldermen being under the municipal code, but what we can certainly do, uh, Alderman Grover and Alderman Rainey, is uh, look at this issue in greater detail, and I'd be very interested in uh, reviewing Champagne's approach so that will inform, uh, inform the context for further discussion at rules. There are obviously in Illinois a lot of different words that one uses to describe members of city council or a, or a village board. Those are generally trustees. So clearly from the perspective of Illinois law, it doesn't require us to be called anything for the purpose of our city code. But let's look into that. I would be happy to Thank do so. You. Let me know if you need help. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Okay. So I uh, will refer this to the Rules Committee. And um, we have no items for discussion, no communications. And so could we have a motion to adjourn? Adjourn. Second. And the Planning and Development Committee will begin meeting at 7.15 p.m. <laughs>